Hello, I'm with ODs and I'm showcasing the pills configurator for the RD1 and 1.2 sensors. In the description of this video, you'll find the install link for the configurator and both the USB firmware. My recommended method of connecting the analysis unit to the computer is using USB. So once the USB firmware is installed, you'll take a micro USB to USB cable and connect the micro USB end to the analysis unit and the USB to your computer, and it's as simple as clicking continue. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the simulator since there's not an analysis unit in front of me, but it is all the same. So you'll pull up on the screen, and your first step is to click user in the top right. If you had just set this software up, you will have been prompted to insert a password. If not, you most likely have been provided the password or know it. Now, you'll be prompted on the dashboard, and as you can see, depending on how many sensors you have set up, I just have one on this test sensor, you'll see your analysis unit and the sensors marked, along with a green check showcasing that they're running, or a yellow caution symbol, or a red X, depending on what the error is. Simply hovering over these will tell you what the error is. Most likely, you're going to receive an error on your first launch. Your next step is going to be to go to Node ID Assignment. Since this is a simulator, I don't have the option to assign the node IDs, but you will be prompted with an option that says automatically assign node IDs. Click that and go through the prompts and it will assign specific IDs to all of the sensors. Now that you have those set up, these should be running all good. And we can start moving into the configuration. In the top left, you have a ruler to accurately and precisely mark distances on your grid along with an add sensor button in the top right you also have a delete sensor button it's a little far away from the add sensor button but it is there in case you need to remove them now this is important because if you were to connect three sensors you will add three sensors and you will add their node ids and have them distinguished so that the so that you can start to edit them as you can see when you click each one of these sensors, you can customly edit how long their beam is, their field of view, along with having multiple detection fields, depending on what you're using it for. Now, under the field of view, you'll see the restart timeout. Now, this is 4,000 milliseconds. It will wait after detecting somebody before it can detect before the warning will go away. As you can see under monitoring, something has detected it and it's moving out. So instead of immediately turning green after it's done detecting it, it will stay red for 4,000 milliseconds. I prefer to change this to a lower number, but do as you wish. In the bottom left, you have a more precise way to change the alignment of the sensor on the grid along with just dragging it around. Now changing the height, as you can see on the, the right here, you can change the angle that the sensor is looking at. This will not actually change what angle the sensor is looking. This is more for uh, planning purposes. You will, you will still have to physically tilt the sensor. You have an identify by LED button based on which sensor you were to click. So if I add another one, I can Click these and say, identify by LED. And an LED will begin to flash on it, allowing you to identify which is which. Under the settings tab, there are, you have many, many freedoms, along with resetting your node ID. As you can see, adding that second sensor has made it so it is not assigned to an ID in a normal, oh, just like this, it is not connected. You can go through here and add digital inputs. So if you'd like to add the reset or many other systems, you do it through digital input, along with changing muting and all these different settings. Under monitoring, this is where you're going to do your tests and make sure that the sensors work. So as you can see, just because it's a simulator, there's something just going through it for test purposes. So in the top right, you can see detection status. It'll tell you exactly on the grid where it's detecting it from. 
So if you have a detection that you didn't see, it will tell you the last time it was detected and where, so you could figure it out and say, okay, I think this was this item setting it off and troubleshoot it. Along with that, you have the system status and the digital input status.